no matter how hard we try, we can never seem to actually get the light in the garage to stay off. So in order to fix that, we're gonna install this new smart switch from GE. What we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about the different technologies that you can use in your home, whether it's Z-Wave or it's Wi-Fi, some pros and cons of each of those, what it takes to get the old light switch uninstalled in your house and get this one installed and set up. One of the reasons why we decided to go with Z-Wave instead of just a standard Wi-Fi device is because we want to make sure that the smart devices in our house will still work even if the internet isn't working. So sometimes we have internet outages at our house and if we don't have internet connections and we want to turn something on, then we either have to do it manually, which kind of defeats the purpose, or we have to wait until the internet comes back online. With Z-Wave, you don't have to worry about that. What it does is it communicates through a separate hub in your house, and so that way everything will continue to work if you have internet connection or if you don't, and all of your schedules will work, all of those things. So if you have problems with internet going up and down in your area, or if you don't have a really reliable internet connection, I consider the Z-Wave line of products. Uh, that might be the best solution for you. Now, before we get started, it's really important to make sure the power is off, so be sure to shut the power off at your breaker or at your fuse panel, depending on what you have in your house. And also, once it's shut off, off, it's always a good idea to sanity check and make sure the power is off with a voltage tester as well, just to make sure everything is safe to work on. Now that the power is shut off, we can go ahead and remove the cover. Once you have the power off of the panel, it's also a good idea to double check with a no contact voltage detector. Uh, this will just give you that extra peace of mind that there isn't any power coming into this box whatsoever. Um, this is actually on because I want to show you what this looks like with one of these. So I don't have to touch this at all, but I'm just going to insert this in the side of the box and you can hear it start to beep and flash, which means there's actually a live current in this box. This is a good tool to have if you're gonna work on electrical projects to make sure that there's no power coming into the location that you're gonna be working at. Now that the power is actually off, once I take this voltage detector and run it down the side here, you can see nothing happens, so this is safe to work on. I'll start by unscrewing this switch from the box, and we'll pull this out here. So you can see, this is a little uncommon, because we've got a red wire, a black wire, and a ground. Typically, it's going to be two blacks to a light switch, um, or you're gonna have a three-way switch, which would have two blacks and a red. This actually has a black and a red in here, so it's a little bit unusual, but it's the same thing. Another thing to be aware of is with these smart switches, uh, typically with a normal switch, you only have to have the hot wires coming in, but with a smart switch, it requires a neutral wire as well, in most cases. The Embrighton switch does require the neutral wire, so we're gonna have to use this for this installation. Um, and if your house is older than, I'd say 2010, then you might not have this wire in your house. I think once uh, 2010 came around, I think it became uh, standard to have neutrals in your light switch boxes, uh, but if not, you're gonna have to go with a different brand that doesn't require a neutral wire, and I'll have a link below where you can check that out um, if that's your situation. It looks like this switch was installed with this process. Instead of using these terminal screws here, they use the stab-in method. So in order to release these wires, you have to take a flat blade screwdriver and push it into the slot, which will release the tension on the wire, and then you can pull the wire out. If you have enough wire in the box, you can also just clip these off to make it easier. As you can see, this is quite a bit different than the old switch that we removed. Uh, one of the big differences, these terminals are marked. This one says load and this one says line. So line is gonna be the wire that's coming from your electrical panel and load is gonna be the wire that's going to your light. So you need to make sure that these are correct. If you get these reversed, then the switch isn't gonna work. On this example here, since we've got two different color wires, we've got a black and a red, and I know that this is a single pole or a one-way switch, meaning there isn't another switch to control the same light. The black is gonna be coming from the electrical panel, and the red is going to be going to the light itself. Um, if these were both black, you'd have to just figure out which one is coming from the panel versus which one's going to the light. The other thing I wanna point out is this actually has a couple holes where you put the wire in as well. You can use the side terminals to wire if you like to, but this method here is called uh, back wiring and it actually has a clamp inside, so it's different than the switch that we uninstalled, which was like a push-in method. The push-in method isn't preferred, but this back wiring method is just fine. So we're gonna use that to reinstall this switch. Since I had to cut off the wires, I'm gonna have to restrip this insulation. Um, this is a 14 gauge wire, so I'm gonna use the 14 gauge setting on these wire strippers and I'm gonna take off about uh, about a half an inch of material, a half an inch of insulation around this. 
So that way we have enough to stick in the new light switch, but not too much to where it's going to be uh, exposed copper. Okay. So that's about a half an inch there. If I got too much, I can always trim this off um, if there's too much copper sticking out of the back. But um, if not, then this should be fine. I'm going to start with this black wire, which is our line. I'm going to insert this in the back here and I'm going to tighten down the screw, which will clamp it. I'll give it a little pull just to make sure that it's seated well. I'll do the same thing for the wire that's going to the light itself. Stick that in. And make sure, as I put this in here, make sure that you don't have too much insulation that's going in, like it needs to be right at the edge or maybe in just a little bit. If you have too much insulation that's left on the wire, then this is not going to make contact and you'll have to do this over. Okay, give that a little pull. That's good. We'll do the same thing for the ground. We'll stick that in here. And we'll tighten it down. All right, so last but not least, we need to hook up this neutral wire. If this was a three-way switch, you'd have another wire in here, which would be a, called a traveler wire that goes to the other switch. Um, that's what this is for, this traveler section here. This neutral wire is for the white one, and that's what we need to hook up now. So for the neutral, they do include a jumper wire that can be used. Uh, this is a little bit too long. They did that in case you're gonna wire with these uh, side terminals here, which we're not doing. Um, it's too long to use to, to push in um, to this, because you can see there's too much uh, metal that's exposed here, and it's gonna be too long for uh, this part where we're gonna use in the wire nut. So I'm gonna trim off some of that first. I can see it now. Okay, that looks about right. And we're just gonna stick all the three of these wires back in this wire nut and we're gonna tighten it down. Give this a little pull, make sure it's tight in there. The nut's not coming off, so it's a good connection. And then we'll take this other end of this jumper wire and we'll stick it in the neutral. Okay. Got that in there and we'll just tighten it down again. Now that all the wires are connected, we just have to get everything back in this box. We also want to make sure that this is facing the correct direction. Um, we don't want to install it upside down. So you can see there's an arrow here that indicates that this is the top. We'll get all these wires back in this box here and uh, we can go turn the power back on. Push all these wire nuts in the back as far as we can go. Tighten it down snug. You don't want it to be too tight though. All right, so this is in place. Now, before we put the cover back on, I'm gonna turn the power back on and test it to make sure everything's hooked up correctly. All right, power's back on. Let's see if this works. Turns on, turns off. Next, we have to get this set up with our hub once we put the cover back on. At this point, the only thing we have to do is add this device to our smart hub. In our case, we're using the SmartThings hub from Samsung. Once we're in the app, we select device, go down to switch, select GE in our case, select Z-Wave, which is the protocol it communicates with, and then follow the rest of the prompts. All we have to do is push up on the switch and that will start the process for the app to start detecting it. We can turn the switch on and off from the app and we can go into the advanced details with the switch and we can set things like timer, power on and power off schedules. Now that we've got this installed, we can not only set up schedules and have this turn off automatically, but we can also do some other cool things like this. Alexa, turn off garage lights. Pretty cool. That's really all there is to installing a smart switch. The bulk of the work is getting the electrical work done. Once it's installed in your house, really everything else kind of falls in place. Getting it set up in the app, getting your schedules created, all those things are pretty straightforward and pretty quick. If you're interested in purchasing one of these GE smart switches, I'll have a link in the description below, as well as links to other smart devices that might be of interest. And as always, I wanna thank you for watching this video. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think about this, if you need help with anything else as it relates to smart home devices, and I would be happy to put together another future video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.